Thank you. That was, uh, that was great. You guys applauded like my parents used to every time I walked out of the house. It's like, yes, he's gone. He's finally gone. I had a unique childhood growing up. I remember when I was younger, about the ages of eight or nine, my mother was very protective of me. Now, I thought it was because she loved me. Turns out uh, we just didn't have medical. Man, I know for me, I, I knew I was poor growing up. I was so poor, I actually loved losing teeth because that meant I could get money from the tooth fairy, right? Like, did you ever do that? You ever do the tooth fairy? You lose a tooth, put it under the pillow, and the next morning, money would be there, right? I decided when I get older and I live in a nursing home, I'm gonna put money under my pillow and hope teeth pop out. <laughs> like, look, I got one. <laughs> nope, just a cracker, Jack, my bad, my bad. But you know, I'm actually afraid of living in a nursing home when I get older, because I'm afraid of who I'm going to be living with. Have you guys seen my generation lately? <laughs> Pray for me. We're all going to look 95, but identify as 25. <laughs> and we're still going to be borrowing somebody older's money somehow. And then we're gonna have gangs in nursing homes, of course we will. But the gangs will be called the Crypsitis and the Blood Clots. <laughs> I grew up poor, and then for my career choice, I chose comedy. So basically, I am not good at finances. <laughs> I, I had to do a bunch of odd end jobs when I first started out comedy 12 years ago, tons of them. Like I used to be an Uber driver, because I was a middle child, and now feel the need to have my personality rated every 10 to 12 minutes. <laughs> I did not like being an Uber driver. Anybody ever be an Uber driver? If not, okay, if you don't know what it is to, to be an Uber driver, or if you don't know what it is to be in an Uber, I'll explain it to you this way. Basically, uh, to get into an Uber, you get in somebody else's car, and then you judge them. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I hated it when I was an Uber driver, but I gotta tell you, now that I'm not a driver, I love judging other Uber drivers. <laughs> like, I like to treat each and every Uber driver like a stepdad. I like to be like, uh, hey, uh, you got any snacks? <laughs> no? Hmm. My other driver had snacks. <laughs> I think it's crazy we live in this society where we can judge people for any reason at all whatsoever. Right? Like, I just want to start going to people's houses and rating it on TripAdvisor. <laughs> I want to be like, don't go to my Aunt Karen's house. She has a litter box, but I've never seen a cat. Two stars, the mysterious Aunt Karen. <laughs> I, I think people are, are, are rude in public nowadays, too. It's like, I wish we could start to rate those people online. Like, like, for instance, have you ever opened the door for a stranger and halfway to the door, you realize that they don't deserve it anymore? <laughs> so you just slowly close the door back up when they're only inches away? <laughs> I don't like when people cuss in public, like when people tell other people to go to H-E double hockey stick, right? So I just tell people to go to Walmart. <laughs> it's practically the same thing. The only difference is that uh, hell is known as a fiery place, and if you ever walk into Walmart, you'll notice that nobody there is hot. <laughs> Does anybody here work at Walmart? I probably should have asked that question first. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I think if we started to um, put a rating to people's conversations, it would help people to stop saying stupid stuff, right? Like, have you ever, and we do it too, we absolutely do it. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and you forget their name? I've done that, and if you've ever done that, this is how I will help you for the rest of your life. If you're ever sitting there and you're like, I do not remember this person's name, do this, it works. You just say, excuse me, um, how do you spell your name again? Yeah, it works almost every time until they're like, you don't know how to spell Bob? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I thought there were three Bs. I didn't know, I didn't know. But I, I think if we started to rate conversations, it would help. Like, have you ever gone to the store with somebody and you split up, you wanna meet back up, so you text, hey, where are you? And they reply, I'm over here. What kind of an answer is that on the phone? <laughs> I'm over here? That's not even an answer. I once went to a grocery store. We split up. We were going to meet back up. I texted, hey, man, where are you? He sent me his location via Google map. 
You know what pops up? The address to the building I'm in. What does he think it's gonna say? Melon Isle? That's what he's supposed to say. He's supposed to say Melon Isle. It's ridiculous. I, I think all of society just gets us in a, in, a, in a tizzy where we're all frustrated and, and afraid of things. And you know, I think fear comes from when you're a kid. Like, uh, have you ever been home alone and somebody knocks on your door? Like for me, that was the most terrifying thing in the world because nobody in my family is Liam Neeson. <laughs> so if I got taken, that was it. And like, I know that I've, I've heard people say that, you know, um, uh, God did not give you the spirit of fear, right? But uh, Jehovah's Witnesses have a couple times. <laughs> All the knocking, I'm telling you. I, uh, <laughs> that's not the deepest fear as a kid though. The deepest fear, and I don't know if anybody's, I'm sure people have related to this. Deepest fear ever as a kid is watching a TV show or a movie and your parent walking in because it doesn't matter what TV show or movie you're watching. The moment your mom walks in, it's always at the most inappropriate scene <laughs> in that TV show or movie. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't even matter what you're watching. You could be watching the magic school bus. <laughs> the moment your mom walks in, Miss Frizzle starts dealing drugs. <laughs> you're like, mom, I swear this has never happened. <laughs> She's like, mm-hmm. I don't like scary movies. I, I can't handle scary movies the same way people can't handle spicy food. You know those friends. Even a little spicy is too spicy. They're like, oh, this is hot. What is this? Toothpaste. <laughs> you can't handle toothpaste? That's how I am with scary movies. And so I don't go see them, but my friends love them. So a while back, I watched this movie and I could not tell you what it's about because my eyes were closed the whole time. All I know is that it involves some creepy kids. I watched it Saturday night. I wake up Sunday morning to go to church to repent. <laughs> and I'm in the bathroom alone, or so I thought. <laughs> All of a sudden, this little kid I've never seen before in my life steps out of a stall and goes, hi. I said, um, hi. And he goes, want to see something scary? <laughs> I said, not particularly. And he goes to the light switch and he turns out the light. <laughs> he turns it back on and he goes, roar. <laughs> and he said, um, okay, good job. And he goes, want to see it again? I said, I didn't want to see it the first time. And he goes to the light switch again and turns it off, turns it back on and goes, roar. And I said, okay, you're done. And he goes, no, no, no. One more time and it's gonna be the scariest thing you've ever seen. At that point, he turns the light off completely. It's complete darkness, it's silence for a long time. And I am convinced that the creepy kids in the movie I saw the night before have come back to haunt me because I didn't watch their movie. So I'm in the corner and I'm 30 years old, I'm very secure, I'll just tell you, I'm crying like a baby. And I walked in to use the bathroom, but I was about to do it again, okay? And I'm just crying, it's dark, I don't hear anything, I, I'm assuming he's climbing on the walls somewhere. And it's the saddest I've ever been. All of a sudden the light turns back on, and he's in a different place and he goes, roar. Apparently this was the scariest thing I'd ever seen. So I just go, what's the matter with you? And I walked out of the bathroom. But then I've seen enough movies that I'm like, I gotta make sure that this guy isn't a figment of my imagination. So I stood by the bathroom to follow him, which legally do not do. <laughs> so I followed him and I figured out who his dad is and his dad's really weird, so it makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs> I'm just saying, pastor kids are strange. Good old pastor kids. I had fear like my whole life. Like I've always just been uh, followed with fear. And, and then when I was 18 is when I started comedy. I started stand-up comedy about 12 years ago. And I had no fear of it not working out um, because I just loved it so much. And that's when I realized that love overcomes fear all day, every day. And then I got married and I realized that sometimes love and fear kind of go together. <laughs> 
And listen, I love my wife. She's my best friend. It's not that. I'm afraid of something that you husbands have never told me. Round of applause if you're married. Go ahead. Great, great. All of you married people, husbands, I am mad at you because you did not tell me something that I wish somebody would have told me. Round of applause if you're not married. Who's not married? All right, good. Three couples. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is awkward for you. Um, <laughs> Here's, I'm gonna tell you something I wish they would've told me, which is this, and I'm gonna lock eyes with you, sir. Here it is. When you get married, you are responsible to keep everybody in your family alive. <laughs> Everyone, your, your wife, keep her alive. Your kids, keep them alive. Animals, alive. Don't even think about a goldfish. Do you know how hard it is to give CPR to a goldfish named Nemo? It's difficult, which is exactly why my dad was always so stressed out, because he had my mom and four kids, and he would constantly shout things like, don't stick your head out the car window, don't jump off the stairs, don't put your finger in the light socket. And that was all just to my mom. <laughs> it's scary stuff. And now we've been married three years, so I learned to laugh more than I do just be afraid of things. And my wife, her and I are best friends. She's my, my co-writer. Um, we just have a blast together, but my single friends don't believe it. My single friends are always like, come on, you guys got to argue all the time. And no, we've only had really two fights so far. One was because one of us said that Star Trek was a terrible show. And she was wrong. <laughs> And the second fight was over a romantic comedy, which is the enemy to all men. You cannot compare yourself to a man in a movie because he has music. Like in a romantic comedy, a man can end an argument with one sentence. He can just be like, I'm so sorry you're mad at me, but I didn't realize how beautiful you are. That doesn't even make sense. In real life, a man can't end an argument that way. Half the time, a man doesn't even know when he's in an argument. He's like, uh, are you mad at me or something? We haven't talked in weeks. I can't tell if we're in a fight or if my wish came true. So we were, it was over this movie called Monster-in-Law. Anybody ever see Monster-in-Law? No? None of you? You've seen it? No, you haven't. None of you have seen it. Okay, great. Here's the deal. You are not missing out. I'll give you a quick synopsis, okay? Uh, Jennifer Lopez, that's all you need to know. It's not worth the watch. There's a scene in the movie where Jenny from the block is walking some dogs. And while she's doing it, this guy goes up to ask her out on a date, and she goes, you know what? You don't know anything about me. You don't even know the color of my eyes. Ugh. Just turns away, just like that, and makes him answer. Now, this is his answer. You have to imagine romantic music behind it, because he goes, well, at first, I thought your eyes were brown, but then I realized that they're green, and then when the sun sets, it's almost auburn. Hold on, this man doesn't know. He has no idea what color her eyes are. He listed three different colors. But it sounds romantic because there's music and she's turned away so she can't see him throw away his man card. <laughs> and it's very lovey-dovey in the movie. In the living room, my wife, then girlfriend, it's important to know we're not married yet so that you're on my side. She looks at me and she goes, what color are my eyes? I, there's a couple of things I think you need to know about me. Uh, number one, I am colorblind. Actually, I'm not, but that's totally what I told her. And number two, um, I am bad at tests. Like, really bad at tests. I, I once... I once got a D on a history exam that I cheated on. Okay, my parents weren't even upset. They were just disappointed in me. They were like, how did you do that? You had the answers on your hand. Like, I'm sorry, I was nervous. I didn't, I didn't know. So, so I got nervous when she asked me, what color are my eyes? Her eyes were closed, and this was my answer. Imagine beautiful romantic music as well. And I said, 
Brown. No, not brown. Uh, brown. No, I just said brown. Uh, <sighs> yellow? No, that's no, that's not right. Can't be yellow. Well, your eyes are red right now, I'll tell you that. I failed. I completely failed. So then I had to do the thing that a lot of guys have to do in an argument. I had to prove to her that I was somehow right. I was like, honey, I said yellow at one point. I think I was right. You might have jaundice. Let's end this argument and head to the hospital right now. We don't have time to argue when you got the jaundice. By the way, her eyes are blue. Never once guessed it. And it wasn't that I didn't know. Like, I knew her eyes were blue, but I just expected a more complicated question. Like, if she would have asked me, what's the one thing you think about more than anything in the entire world? For her, it's animals. Like, she thinks about animals so much that she is emotionally attached just by hearing a story about another animal. No. <laughs> No, I'm gonna correct you there. <laughs> the first time that her dad told her the story of Jonah and the whale, she just burst it out into tears. She's like, uh, is the whale okay? It's not even about the whale. What are you talking about? And I, like, I like animals too, but I just don't think about them as much as she does. Like, that's the problem. Like, I walked home the other day and I said, Honey, I have a surprise for you. She goes, Is it a kitty? I was like, Well, I clearly walked in with Chinese food, so. <laughs> hey, you guys came up with that punchline, not me. That's on you at this point. I love food, by the way, I love food. I just lost 50 pounds. Yes, oh, thank you. Oh, I appreciate that, I'm glad you guys applaud weight loss. I'm from the Midwest, we do not applaud weight loss in the Midwest. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize until I moved to the West Coast that, uh, that there were cities and towns and states that were very health conscious, and I moved to Arizona. That's when I noticed it, because I went to a movie theater in Phoenix, Arizona, and I watched somebody order a small popcorn. <laughs> small. I didn't even know small was a size. Like, I'm from Ohio. In Ohio, the movie theater isn't even about the movies. It's about the food. We have hoses of butter we spray on the kids before the movie starts. Everybody's slippery, but we're happy. And sure, in Ohio, we do have popcorn size small, but it ends in the word bucket. <laughs> we have small bucket, large bucket, where's my accountability partner bucket? And then we have a family bucket, which is really just a wheelbarrow of popcorn in your own personal butter hose. And that, that's not enough for us. I don't know if anybody's parent ever did this growing up, but my mom would always go, oh, we're going to the movies? I'll get my big purse. <laughs> right, like the moment the movie started, it was a scene from Mary Poppins. <laughs> She's just pulling everything out of that bag. She's like, oh, we got Snickers, Snickerdoodles, Kit Kats, M&Ms, Gobstoppers. Oh, who ordered the Chinese food? I was like, I did. And the best part is you could eat like a pig at the movies because you're not the one who has to clean it up. It's always some 14-year-old worker at the end of the night that's just like, who ate lo mein? <laughs> and I, I, really what caused uh, the weight loss for me when I went out to Arizona is I met friends that were very fitness focused. And that's kind of how they led, that's how they met me. They were like, hope you don't mind, but we like to exercise and have fun. And they were liars. <laughs> because we did not have fun. Like all we did is exercise. To this day, all they do with me is exercise. Like we're currently training for a marathon. Why? Like I'm pretty sure they're not my friends. I'm pretty sure I'm at fat camp. I just haven't figured it out yet. But my friends, these guys, they showed me things I had never seen before from Ohio. Things like gyms, Anybody ever been to a Planet Fitness? If you have not, yes, okay. If you have not gone, you need to go just to read the names of the machines. They have this one machine, it does this. <laughs> the 
that is the most embarrassing machine I've ever seen in my life. But do you guys know what they, they call this? Well, they call this weird. Sorry, sir. Keep it on. <laughs> you know what they call this machine? They call it the hip abductor. It abducts your hip? How does that happen? Hey, fat little hip. You like candy? Get in the van. Get in the van, you fat hip. You're gonna die. And the hip just wakes up in a warehouse somewhere just like, when can I go home? When you stop eating cupcakes, you fatty. Months later, someone's walking down the road. They're like, oh, Karen, you look great. Oh, thanks. It was the hip abductor. Completely abducted my hip. Tortured it for a couple of weeks. And now it's a vegan. By the way, this movement will end all conversations. In case you ever want people to leave you alone. After I lost all the weight, I had to come up with diet rules. Never do a rule. They don't make, they don't work. They, they backfire every time. Like, I love a cake a lot, which, side note, I bet if birthday cakes could talk, I bet they'd just blow and spit all over your face and say, how do you like it? <laughs> I like the premise of that joke, because like, why would a cake talk? We don't know. But I created this rule where I told myself I'm only gonna eat cake at weddings from now on. That backfired real quick. Do you know how easy it is to find weddings on a Saturday? <laughs> it's easy. You can just grab it and go. That's what I love about it. But I did like diets and everything like that after to try to figure something out. And you know, people always ask me, they're like, oh, okay, how, how, did, how did you lose that much weight? Is there one secret to it? And I think we all know there's not one secret. Like every person is different, every body is different. You gotta find what works for you. And what works for me is workout videos. You know, the ones that are like, you're doing great, keep going. I love those because I learned something amazing about them. When they're encouraging you, they are not actually watching you. Which means that you can do whatever you want to do and get encouraged. I recommend everybody tonight, go home, open up that freezer, grab your giant tub of ice cream, put peanut butter sprinkles and birthday cake all over that bad boy. Then you pop in that Richard Simmons DVD and get encouraged. Like, you're doing great, keep going. I will. <laughs> Don't stop. I won't. <laughs> Dig deeper. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a freezer burn. Go past the burn. I'm trying. Go past the burn. I'm trying. Go past the burn. Just abduct my hip. <laughs> Thank you guys, I'm Chris Weinland. For watching my comedy special, now is the time where you can tip me. And you know, you could tip me, uh, I don't know, the same price as a cup of coffee, like two, three hundred dollars. You know, and basically what this does is it helps others uh, to know who you like to see online, and also, you know, my whole family gets to live and survive. So go ahead and tip me. Thanks so much.